Hi everybody, I'd like to take you through a brief tutorial today regarding acquiring image data from ROS. This is based on a tutorial that you can find on the CPS Virtual Organization. So I've already downloaded some of the Git tutorial things. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and clone this repository, uh, which you can find here on the CPS VO website. Um, I've already done that into this directory, so um, you can see here that I'm in my cat vehicle workspace and source, and I'm going to go into cat vehicle simulink tutorials. I'm going to begin with this image acquisition, which is the, the first tutorial that I want to show you. If we're working with images inside of Simulink, we have to transform ROS images into a Simulink style, the Simulink um, data type, so that Simulink can take advantage of the various um, tools that it has. So Simulink utilizes a specific kind of uh, data definition in order to look at the images that it can visualize. And we need to transform what's available in ROS into that particular kind of image. So the structure is the following, that we're going to capture data from the image here. Uh, this data comes from the cat vehicle left camera. And when we receive that data here on the bus, we just want to pass along exactly the data that we see. And we're going to transform this raw data from here into a Simulink image inside of this block. So in this block is really where I want to show you kind of what's happening. So let's look inside of ROS to image we can see that we're using two Simulink blocks here, but then there's also this MATLAB code block. Um, you can see in the, the definition of this documentation that we're trying to explain a little bit about what does a ROS image look like. A raw image in ROS looks the following way that we have for pixel one, one, pixel one, two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way until as many wide as this image is. So if it's a 800 by 600 image, then we're going to go from pixel 11 all the way to pixel 1800. And each one of these values in ROS has R, G, and B right next to each other. So pixel 1, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, all the way till we get to as wide as it is. And for every row, we have another value until we get to as high as this image is. This is what a ROS stream looks like for an image. And we have all of these values across. This is different than what MATLAB expects. MATLAB expects an 800 by 800 by 3 matrix. That is to say that we're going to take each of these values, 1, 2, 3, and add them into a new, uh, a third dimension of this matrix. So we'll still have an 800 by 800 image, but it will be like three 800 by 800 matrices in their own subarray. And we do that inside of here. So first of all, we find all the R's. So we skip every third element in the input value to get the R's. We start at number two and then skip every third element to get the G's, and then start at number three and skip every third element to get the B's. We then take the R's, G's, and B's, which are now uh, just a single length vector, and we transform these into 800 by 800 values. Clearly, you're gonna to have to change this if the structure of your image is a little different, and we may work on this model later in order to improve uh, how we can make this a little bit more uh, generalizable. But now you can see that we have three different values, 800 by 800 by 800, uh, and that gives us the RGB values. We're next gonna turn these into what Simulink is expecting. So we're gonna concatenate them all. This vector concatenate says that I have three inputs, and I want to create now a multi-dimensional array by concatenating the second one. So this gives us, instead of a 2400 by 800 matrix, this gives us an 800 by 2400 matrix. So this provides now uh, a much more interesting shape that the reshape will allow us to transform this 800 by 2400 into 800 by 800 by 3. So we're using standard Simulink blocks for uh, reshaping a matrix here. And that produces now what we can see in Simulink is an image. To do things with this in Simulink, we, we can now transform it by using some of these uh, Simulink kinds of tools. But I'd like to next just go ahead and run this model for you. Um, let me start here by source devel setup.bash and ross launch cat vehicle 
cat vehicle neighborhood dot launch. I like to use the cat vehicle neighborhood uh, for some of these image tests because the neighborhood has a few houses and some other things sitting around and allows us to see uh, exactly what we should be expecting instead of just having sort of nothing off to the side. And in this uh, source devel setup.bash ross run uh, gz client, or sorry, I can just run gz client here. The gazebo client should allow us to see what the car looks like in the space. And if we imagine that we're looking out of, I'm going to just click here and drag, and then I'm going to hold down shift and transform from here. If we imagine that we're looking out of the left camera, which is this camera here, if we imagine we're looking out of the left camera, then we should expect to see this house out the window. Let's now run the Simulink model to see what we can see. So here in image acquisition, I'm subscribing to the left camera. Let's go ahead and run this here. And it may always take a few moments for the first time that you run this because uh, Simulink does a lot of uh, code generation in the back end to make its um, to make its execution much faster than it would be otherwise if it were scripted. So the a lot of the performance benefits comes from the fact that Simulink handles some of the code gen in its back end. You can see later when we do some other tutorials on generating code from the from Simulink ROS blocks that we produce that by um, taking advantage of code generation it allows you to field some of your ROS nodes as independent nodes rather than needing to run Simulink in the loop in order to have things work for you. So it looks like now it's still working on this compilation. Uh, I could save a lot of processor time perhaps by closing down Gazebo here and as you do many more of these tutorials you may be noticing things that you can do in order to improve your execution time uh, your system may be running low on memory or it may be requiring a lot of execution of other kinds of things in your back end. Uh, I do advise you to always turn off your email clients and all those other kinds of things because they can take up a, a tremendous amount of memory which can slow down your compilation process. So we're still waiting on this here but the compiling is getting a little bit bigger over time and now everything seems to be done. And we should be able to see two different things outside the video display here. There we go. So the first of these is uh, a grayscale version of the house. And you can see that it matches what we can see over here. Uh, but it uses the camera parameters of these default cameras that we've created. So we've actually done two things that aren't that interesting, but are uh, perhaps a little bit more interesting than what we see. Uh, but we can see this house, this house, and you can see even more I drag over here that there's another house over here that we can just barely catch through the, the camera parameters that we have. I'm going to go ahead and switch this off now uh, to save ourselves a little bit of processing. Um, but in the top image, we're converting RGB to intensity using a standard simulink block for this. Uh, RGB to intensity gives you grayscale. And after we get the grayscale version of this image, we're performing an image erosion here. If you've had an image processing class, you probably are familiar with the erosion. Um, and then just looking at that in the video display. Uh, similarly here, we're doing some edge detection with the Sobel algorithm. Uh, let me stop this here. You can see that some of these blocks also have uh, different operations that you could select. So if you don't want to use Sobel's, if you want to use uh, John Candy's algorithm here, we can apply this and rerun. It might have to spend a little bit more time recompiling or it might uh, have a problem with something else here. Uh, image acquisition fixed point input is not supported when the method parameter is set to canny. So we can't use the the canny here because of uh, fixed point input is not supported for canny edge detection method. So I've just shown you that not everything works all the time. Uh, <laughs> We'll see if it works for the, the Roberts version here. Seems like it does, so if you use a different algorithm, uh, you can sometimes get different values. 
And so here, again, I'm not sure if this looks much different from the Sobel method, uh, but if you have a different method that you'd like to use, then you can take advantage of the fact that Simulink blocks can, can really take care of this for you. So hopefully this has been useful for you. Uh, if you're interested in doing more things with the ROS images that come directly from cameras in either a simulator or in real data, uh, you can take advantage of this ROS to image block here and just copy your camera uh, subscription over here from the left and pass along the data and then the output that you should get is an image. Noting that you'll probably need to, to change some of the height and width values in here if that's interesting to you. Um, so good luck to you and uh, please check back with comments on the forum if we can help uh, solve any problems for you or work on any tutorials you think would be interesting.